Well, Sammy, what's up, man? This is Cody. Just wanted to sit down with you here, and I wanted to wish you a happy birthday, man. Um, and I just wanted to do something I, I thought might be uh, fun for us, um, and I just thought uh, what would be really cool is uh, I want to tell you kind of my um, my tips, my tricks for you to get better at Madden. And I wanted to do this with you first, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to send this to you for your birthday, and then we're going to share this onto our YouTube channel, onto my YouTube channel, and let everybody uh, see it. So I'm really excited about this project, and, and hopefully uh, it's helpful to you. Again, man, just wanted to tell you happy birthday and do this just for you. So on PlayStation, if you log in... Um, and you'll see, you can just click on Madden 20, and that's how you pull it up. And I'm playing on PlayStation 4. One of the things that I wanted to tell you is whenever you want to practice, what you want to do is you want to have two controllers. So if you have a second controller, which I think you do, um, what you'll want to do is create kind of a guest account, or you could just play whatever as is. But I want to show you a couple things you can do in your settings that is going to help you make your practice mode time a lot more fruitful uh, and just a lot more effective. So once we log in here, uh, I'll, I'll show you that. And I want to talk to you specifically about um, a couple of things that you can do with your players as well. In this Madden 20, and it changes every year, but you want to have, you want to pick a Madden team that has the best of whatever it is you want to do. So if you're a runner, you want to have a good running back, which this year I want to show you a couple things with that. But if you're a passer, you want to have a good quarterback. So like for me, I'm more of a passer on offense, so I need a really good quarterback. But that's kind of how you want to pick your team. It, you, every year has different strengths and weaknesses. So anyway, when you hop in here, I want to show you. So if you go over here, this is the main menu. And I'm going to go over here all the way to the right. And I'm going to click on settings. And then I'm going to go into my settings right here. And you can, there's obvious all sorts of different, you know, settings here. But the one I want to focus on is just the, the game settings. And then click on game options. From there, favorite team, you can... Pick whoever you want. I like the Chiefs. I think they're the best team for me because I'm a passer. That's what I like to do. So um, the playbook I'm going to talk to you about is Arizona today, but you don't have to use Arizona. I want to show you. Actually, I think I'm going to show you this playbook because it's a little bit easier. So West Coast. And then on defense, you can, whatever defensive playbook you want to use, you can pick it here. So you can change, you know, do different, um, different um, playbooks. So what I like is Baltimore. Um, that has everything that I need in it. Another playbook that I would recommend for you is Green Bay. Uh, Green Bay is another really good, uh, really good playbook to utilize as well. Miami's good, but uh, and I think actually we'll roll with Green Bay today because I just want to show you some things. NFL Live playbooks. What happens is throughout the season, they'll update them with different plays. So you could actually turn that on and you could use, you know, different different playbooks that way as well. For your skill level, you want to practice on all Madden because when you go to play your friends online, it's going to be in the all Madden and the competitive game level. And so that's, that's how you want to practice because the game does play differently. For example, if you're playing on pro it's a way different game than if you're playing on all Madden. And so that's why I tell everybody to play on all Madden. Coin toss for the first choice, you want to always have it as kick. Um, you always want to have it as kick because the way you win more games in Madden, it, one of the biggest things you can do is you can kick the ball off to start the game. That's huge. It's a huge step um, because what that does is it allows you to be able to have that, that extra possession in the second half when it's most important. The second choice I would say you want to have with you want to have with win but you can do either or. I don't really it doesn't necessarily matter. Auto flip defensive play call, you want to turn that off, okay? That's that's critical because the the tips that I'm going to show you on defense, it's only going to work if auto flip is off, okay? Defensive ball hawk, you want to hold that, you want to keep that on, and basically what that means is if you're usering someone over the middle of the field, if you go to try to intercept it, you just hold, like when you click onto them, you just hold the button and it'll let you intercept it. I would take heat circuit assist off, defensive switch assist off, and coach mode off, um, and then everything else is, is as is here.
Okay, so these are your settings, and this is going to be really critical for your practice mode sessions that, I, that I'm going to tell you. So this is how to practice and how to get better at the game. That's what I want to focus on. So you back out of that. It should automatically save everything to your account. Um, so you're going to back out of that. And then this is what I wanted to spend most of our time with today is I want to talk to you. Actually, I want to talk to you one, one more second about, um, let me see if I can find... If you go to settings and you go to view superstar X factors, this is something that is different this year than it's ever been. And it'll probably continue, but basically specific players like star players on teams, they have specific abilities. So I wanted to go over that with you really quickly. So if you look at like, let's say you look at the Packers. So the Packers quarterback, Aaron Rodgers, has you see here he has these ability gambler he can't be intercepted by ai defenders so what that means is if a if someone is if they don't if you throw the ball and in the against the computer they can never intercept it if you use aaron rodgers it's an ability that he has the two that i wanted to focus in on for you today though is dashing dead eye um, dashing dead eye, what that allows you to do is it gives you perfect pass accuracy when you're running when you're running around with your quarterback. So it's the best ability in the game if you're a passer. That's why I have um, that is why I have Patrick Mahomes or Russell Wilson. That's who I use all the time. Those or Aaron Rodgers. If I want to pass the ball and my offense is going to be based on passing, I'm going to want to use a quarterback that can run out of the pocket and throw the ball that's why like if you look here the patriots tom brady he has um he has these these abilities now these abilities are really really good but the only problem is he doesn't have that dashing dead eye and the way the game plays this year if you roll out of the pocket with your quarterback it's a really really effective uh to be able to get players open to be able to to pass the ball so you could use Tom Brady, but just know that you're not going to have that ability. When you pair, and I want to show you, this is why I choose Patrick Mahomes, though. When you pair two abilities together, it makes you virtually unstoppable as a quarterback. You see how Patrick Mahomes is a dashing dead eye. He also has Escape Artist. Escape Artist is improved scrambling speed behind the line of scrimmage. Escape Artist is what you're going to use. It's going to give him like a little turbo boost whenever he gets out of the, um, whenever you start to scramble. He's going to get a little bit of a turbo boost because he's kind of a mobile quarterback. They give a lot of mobile quarterbacks this. Russ, uh, Lamar Jackson has it. But they don't give a lot of quarterbacks his dashing dead eye. When you pair the two of them together, it turns you into just an amazing passer of the football. So if you want to pass, that's what I would do. One I wanted to show you also, but but you want to choose a team that kind of fits your mold. So if you're a passer, you want to look for those attributes. If you want to run the ball more, though, let me show you two um, specific ones. So the Tennessee Titans, Derrick Henry has arm bar, and arm bar is really effective because armbar basically when someone's trying to tackle you if you just hit x on playstation you're going to be able to break that tackle normally as long as um as long as you time it right but basically when someone comes up to tackle you if you just tap x like two or three times fast what's going to happen is it's going to typically give you at least one tackle broken and derrick henry is going to fall forward so if you like to run the ball that's one thing that you can do Another thing that you can do um, is someone like Dalvin Cook, he has a jukebox. And what the jukebox um, ability allows you to do is it allows you to basically have really fast jukes. And so you juke by clicking the right stick. And I can show you all this in the practice mode uh, segment. But but that if you want to juke, I don't think it's as good as the arm bar but that's my personal opinion and that's my preference so it's kind of preference but if you if you have a a, a, um, a running back you want to make sure that you have the right ability for what you want to do if you want to run the ball and try to use the stiff arm to break tackles then i would go with someone with arm bar but it doesn't necessarily make sense to juke with derrick henry because he's not good at it right you want to play to your player's strengths it makes sense to stiff arm with him 
The other running back I wanted to talk about was Josh Jacobs. Um, he's got Bulldozer, and what Bulldozer allows you to do is it allows you to truck. So if you flick the right stick forward, that's going to make him give a truck animation, animation, and it's just going to help him fall forward, and he'll break some tackles that way. And then there was one other one, um, spin cycle. That's what uh, McCaffrey has. So his spin moves, um, basically, if you hit if you hit left trigger, right trigger, if you hold those, and then you hit circle, you can the left stick. You can use that to kind of angle it however you want it to go. So that's why you would use jukebox. Uh, Le'Veon Bell has arm bar and spin cycle. So you see what I'm saying? If you just want to basically pick the back. If you want to run the ball, you want to pick the back with the ability that you want to use the most. Do you want to truck people? Then you want to use Leonard Fournette. He's got Bulldozer. Do you want to stiff arm people? You want to use Derrick Henry. If you're asking me what the best overall move is, in my opinion, it's the um, stiff arm, the arm bar. So that's what I would recommend. You see here, uh, Saquon Barkley's got some good abilities as well. But again, you just want to go through. And then on defensive side of the ball, Here's a couple things that I want to make sure that you do. On defense, for people, this is what I tell everybody. You want to have a Fletcher Cox type of player. And that is this um, power move specialist. Okay, um, He is going to do a really good job of getting pressure up the, a -gap, up the middle of the in defensive line. So if the quarterback passes, um, he's going to do really good. You see here on the Chiefs, Chris Jones has that same ability. So that's why I also why I like the Chiefs. Those two abilities, having a really good defensive lineman that can give you pressure and then having a really good quarterback for me is what I look for. But you'll see here the Cowboys, you have Demarcus Lawrence. He's an edge threat. It only gives him dominant pass rush removes from the defensive end position. The good part about Chris Jones is every you can put him on the inside or you can put him on the outside, and he's still going to get that boost um, of that power move specialist. And normally just the way the game plays, it's better to have um, pressure up the middle because it forces um, the quarterback can't just like block a running back to stop that. Okay. And then the only other thing I wanted to tell you about on defense was 49ers. So um, if you want to, if you want to play kind of um, a pass coverage type of thing, Richard Sherman is going to, if you're a zone, so you also have to ask yourself, are you a zone guy or are you a man guy? If you're, I'm a zone guy. So I like zoned out abilities because what happens is they get better reactions in zone. So most, the routes that I'm going to show you to beat zone will beat every zone. But if they have a zoned out ability, then it makes it a little bit more difficult. And sometimes you, you won't beat it. So that's why zoned is good. If you're going for defense and you don't need a mobile quarterback, the um, Niners are probably the best if you're a zone defense because they've got Fred Warner, who's really good. Sherman's really good. And then you see you've got Bosa, who he has the finesse move specialist. So you can put him in the middle and then you can put D Ford on the outside and you have a nice little one-two punch there. So anyway, the 49ers are really good. But And if I was running the ball, if you're, if you're a runner, then I would use the Titans. But if you can get away with not having any special moves on your running back, then you could use the Niners and be very effective. So anyway, that's how I would recommend you picking your teams and just some things to look for. Now what I want to do is jump into practice mode. So if we back out of that and we go back to the main menu here, I'm going to go to exhibition and I'm going to go to practice mode. Now, once I do that, I've got my second controller here. So I'm going to click normal. And then my second controller, I'm going to log into that. So put hit the PlayStation, the little button for some reason, it's not letting me. Um, and you see here, you can make a new user if you don't have one. I've already got a guest account. So the guest account, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you two specific teams that I would recommend. So I'm going to show you a really good running team and a really good uh, passing team. I think I've talked a lot about the Chiefs. So what I'm going to do for you today is talk about the, um, the Green Bay Packers. And then I'm going to show you the Tennessee titans with derrick henry so skill level um you want this to all madden because if it's not on all madden it's not going to work so you want both sides to be playing on all madden for advanced settings what you want to do is you want to go down there you want to change the playbook so whenever you're practicing what you want to do is you want to pick two different 
playbooks that you want to work on. So for offense, the Titans are a really good running team. So I'm going to talk to you about how to utilize the Oakland playbook. It's the best playbook. If you're going to run the ball, you want to use the Oakland playbook. It's literally the best by far. And if you, on defense, there's two different types of defenses that I want to talk to you about. There's passive and there's blitz heavy. So passive is, and I'll use the uh, Titans to show you this, but passive, you want to use Baltimore. See, and that's your playbooks. And then you hit back and you hit ready, and then you're good to go. And then for the Packers, because I've shown a lot of Chiefs, so I'm going to show the, the Packers, because I think the Packers are really good with Aaron Rodgers. So you just accept that. The only thing he doesn't have is the escape artist, but you can kind of get around with that. And then you see here West Coast and uh, Green Bay. That's what I'm going to show you. I've been showing a lot of Arizona, so I wanted to give you something new that I haven't talked about a ton. And then we hit ready and we're going. So what's going to happen is on defense, what you want to do when you're practicing, you always want to have two controllers because when you have two controllers, it allows you to test your plays a little bit better on the offensive side of the ball. It allows you to kind of just do a little bit more, um, a little bit more practicing, just a little bit more intense. And you always want to practice every play that you run before you run it in a game. That's a great rule of thumb. You always want to do that. So, I'm going to show you kind of how to build a scheme. I want to show you the best offense in Madden 20 on the West Coast, and I'm going to show you what I would consider to be the best um, the best pass defense and the best run defense from the uh, this the the first one I'm going to show you is the best run defense, and then the second one I'm going to show you is the best pass defense. So when I get on Green Bay, I'll show you passing. But anyway, we'll jump into this. So you're in the West Coast on offense. You've got two controllers here. And when you want to practice offense, what I like to suggest to people is you come out in like a big dime 2-3-6 or a nickel 3-3-5. Three, three, uh, nickel 3-3-5 three, three, is probably the better version because it has different um, pass coverages. So nickel 3-3-5, three, three, and you want to set your audibles. So I'm going to change, dog, change dogs all go to like a cover 3 cloud. I've got Tampa 2, I've got Cover 3, I've got Cover 2 Man, and I could change Cover 3, actually, to the 3 Double Buzz, which is like a better version of Cover 3, in my opinion, but now you can see that. So you've got multiple coverages, and then you want to come out in the play Cover 4 Drop. That's the play you want to come out in every time, and what's going to happen is now you can try your plays out against Cover 4, Cover 3, Cover 2, and 2 Man Under Man Coverage. Okay, so that's kind of what you that's how you want to kind of start it out. So come out and cover four. And then on offense, the formation I'm going to focus in on you on on with you is the formation um, gun bunch. This is a very famous formation. Everyone that's a passer has at some point ran this formation. So I want to talk to you about it. So first things first. Aaron Rodgers at quarterback. If you hit R1, it allows you to make substitutions, as you can see here, and then you just use the D-pad. So I'm going right on the D-pad. It gives me this, so I can put Aaron Jones in at running back. At wide receiver, I, I can put um, Mark um, Geronimo Allison in the middle. That's where you want to have your fastest one. You want to have your best receiver on the left side of the field, and then a good route runner, Marquez Valdez, he, he'll be fine. And then Jimmy Graham. So you see, I've, I've done some situational adjustments. And I can do that from every formation. Another thing is, you'll see packages. So I could do different packages here. I'm basically scrolling with the right analog stick. But there's not really that good of ones in the bunch. So, And then audibles. This is critical. So when you click X to choose your play, you'll see at the bottom, it's at the bottom of the screen, it says L2 audibles. So I'm going to click L2. And what that's going to do is it's going to bring me up the audibles. I can replace audibles by formation. This is an amazing feature. It's really, really helpful. So basically, I'm going to replace spacing. And the plays that I'm going to break down for you, the first one that I want you to slide in there is I want you to put the play uh, mesh post. The second one I want you to put in there is the play stick. And then leave verticals, you want that in there. And then you want to put in uh, wide receiver post or deep attack. It's up to you. I'm going to choose wide receiver post. Okay? So those are your kind of four plays. And then you want to come out in the same play every time. And that's going to give you access to five plays that are going to really help you in the passing.
uh, deep corners is a play you're going to want to come out in every single time. Now, you need to have a plan for when you get down in the red zone. And so my plan, um, or whenever you need to run the ball. So you can see here the doubles flex. It's a really good formation. And so what I like to do is click on that. And again, I can hit left trigger. It's going to bring up the audibles. I can put stretch in there. I got the HB dive in there. And I think I can change that to the HB slam, which is a better inside running play so now i've got an outside run and an inside run and then i can put the play in uh tight end post would be the other play that i want you to put in there and then pa double post so now you have a good under center formation so in case you get in the red zone and you want to go no huddle you can do that and you'll have really good running um, really good running plays another really quick tip for you is the near jumbo formation and the goal line has the same personnel so what I'm saying is you can audible, and I'll show you that in just a minute, but gun bunch, and you can come out in deep corner. Okay, so here I am in deep corner. If you hold left trigger and you flick up right, hold up on the right analog stick, you see I can see the play. One other thing I want you to do, if you click the right stick in, like literally click it, listen to the sound. I'm just pushing it in. What happens is it gives you the menu. These are all the things that you can do. So if I hold right trigger, it's going to give me the X factor vision, um, which basically allows me to see um, where the X factors are on the, on the field. The other thing I can do is I can hit L1, and that's going to give me an adjustment for pass protection. This is really, really important because this is going to help you. Because if someone's blitzing you off the right, you can slide it to the right. If someone blitzes you off the left, you can slide it to the left. You can max protect. So basically, you're going to flick the right stick. And if you look, watch the play art of my alignment. So if I flick it to the right, you see they're going to slide to the right. If I flick it up, it's going to max protect, and that's going to block all of my running backs. And then if I flick it down, that's going to tell me double team. And then I get to scroll through and pick someone to double team. You always want to double team their superstar. So here, Casey has a, a superstar ability. So I'm going to select over to him, and then I'm just going to hit X to select it. So that way, it's going to block him. Okay, But those are things that you can do. The other thing that you can do is hot route. So you can hit triangle, and if I click on a receiver... So for ex I'm going to teach you how to do that in just a second, but or teach you you know what exactly to do. But like for example, on this specific play, I might not want Marquez Valdez Squantling to go on that on that route. I don't want him to go on a post. Maybe I want him to go on a different route. Well, if I hit triangle and I hit circle, that's going to bring up wide receiver hot routes for Marquez Valdez Scantling. And you see here, I can put him on eight. I can put him on eight different routes as well as two other ones. So I can put him on 10 different routes. I can put him on a streak, which is up on the left analog stick, and you see it's going to change his route. I can put him on a zig, which is flicking the right stick to the right, and you see it's going to change his route. I can put him on a hitch route, and you see it's going to change his route. That's triangle, circle, right trigger. Okay, But you see I have different options. Now, if I motion Marquez Valdez Scantling out to the outside, you'll see that it's going to, and I do that by hitting circle. So circle, and then I just go until I get to him. And then if I, I can put left on the D-pad, it's going to motion him in. I can put left on the D-pad. You see it's going to motion him across here. I can bring him back on this way as well. And so it allows you to get really, really creative with all the things you can do. And what's really cool is if I motion him to the right, you see now he's on outside. And if I put him on, if I bring him up to do a hot route again, you'll see that now I can put him on two other routes. I can put him on a comeback or smoke screen because now he's on the outside. So if I put him on a smoke screen and I bring him back, but you see I can't motion him back in. So that's the only, um, only caveat. Okay, so anyway, those are some some different pre-step things that you can do. The other thing that you can do is you can audible. So I talked about how it's really important to kind of set those audibles up. Well, if you hit square, you're going to be able to audible. It's going to bring up this menu. So I can select any of these plays. So if I hit square and maybe I hit R1, that's going to put me in a new play, wide receiver post. If I hit verticals, you see it's going to change the play, square L1. Now, if I scroll to the right or to the left, it's actually going to change the formation. So you'll see I can I can scroll all through different formations. The formation that I want you to focus on is the single back doubles flex. 
because I can scroll to that. And then you'll see now, if the defense comes out in a pass-heavy set, then I can go to this play, and now I'm in the HB stretch like we were talking about. And that's why I wanted you to set those audibles up. Hopefully that's making sense to you. Um, but that's really, really important because being able to audible at the line of scrimmage to any play in your playbook really opens things up for you. All right? So all that being said, now I want to talk to you about deep corner and the way that I want you to run this offense. The way I want you to run this offense, think about it very simply like this. You want to have, it's basically a max protect scheme. What you're going to do every time is you're going to come out and you're going to hit, you're going to block your running back and you're going to block your tight end. And the reason you're going to do that, and then you're going to want to double team whoever the best pass rusher is. The reason you're going to want to do that is it's going to give your quarterback a lot of time to throw the ball. And the routes in the shotgun bunch are so good that you don't have to have very many of them because they're that good. So in this situation here, this is one way to run this play. And what I would recommend with, with Valdez Scantling is I would recommend just putting him on a hitch route. So hot riding him to a simple hitch route. And he's going to be able to kind of be a check down read for you. And you'll see at the snap of the ball, if I snap the ball and then I roll out with Aaron Rodgers, you're going to see I can throw the ball to the right on that corner route. Now, you can do that against man-to-man, -man, zone, any defense in the game. Let me show you. Um, that was cover four. Let me show you cover three. So that's why you want to have those all those plays, right? So here I just hit square, R1, and audible to a cover three. And I'll show you on my other controller here. But that's the coverage shell. And now what's going to happen is maybe let's just say they they um, they play cloud flats on you. Okay, that's what their first the first thing they're going to try to do is do that. So I'm just going to roll out with Aaron Rodgers because I got a nice double team pass lead that to the right, and I didn't get quite a good I didn't get as good of an animation as I wanted to get. But let me show you that one more time. So again, you're just going to roll down and to the right. Now the way you do that is when you're rolling, so you're holding right trigger to roll out with the quarterback. So you're just going to hold right trigger, roll out, and then when you go to throw it, you're going to, because you're rolling right with your left joystick, you're going to basically try to tilt it down when you go to throw it. So you're going to you're going to throw it. If imagine like your joystick is a clock, and you're going to throw it at about four o'clock on your clock, and you see it's going to keep it away from the defense. That's the key. It's going to keep it away from the defense. So let me show you this. So if they go press coverage, let's just say they do something like that. And that's, again, why you want to have that. So I can do that. But you're going to roll out, get right, throw it down and away. And as you can see, you can get that possession catch. Now, what's really important if you're going to run this play is whenever you throw it, you want to hit circle and you want to hit and you want to hold the X button. When you do that, you're going to click onto the receiver and you're just going to guide him toward the ball. Okay, so click on, drag him over, and you see you're just going to hold X. And what that's going to do is it's going to force your receiver into a specific type of catching animation. That is going to be really, really good for this because it's a sideline uh, throw. Okay? Now, the only way that they can stop this, um, you'll see here. So here's, here's cover two man. So again, max protect. Roll him out to the right. Whoops. Whoops. Sorry about that. So if they go man to man, you're going to max protect, roll him out to the right, put that guy on a hitch. So roll him out, throw it out to the right. And you see here against man, it's not quite as good. And that's why you could put Devonte Adams there. Most people aren't going to run man, to be quite honest with you. Uh, most people are going to run zone, but you'll see here right there. So that's, that's the route. The next thing that you can do, though, is if they're in the, the way they're going to try to get it to stop is they're going to call cover two. They're going to call Tampa two, and they're going to put a cloud flat out there. Whoops, I messed up. Got the pressure on me. And if you see them sending edge pressure like that, it's going to be in your best interest to stay in the pocket. Again, that's why you're, that's why you're doing that. 
But if the window is open for you to roll, then roll. But if not, stay in the pocket. And you'll see, I can't throw that corner around now because of that cover too. But what I can do is I can throw the deep in route to Devontae Adams. Or I can throw the little underneath hitch route to Scantling. So here I can throw it right there. And again, you want to possession catch it. Or... I can throw it. So again, if I look to my right and he's covered by that cloud flat, then I can throw it right in that window right there, as you can see. And basically all you want to do is you want to anticipate it. And by practicing this play over and over again, you'll get really good at this. But you're just going to watch those other, okay, that's ticking up. You're going to step up right there's where you're going to throw it. Now, if you were doing this, let's just say I want to kind of create a, a little bit of a example for you. So um, let's just say that you are going to roll out to the right. Let's just say they give you the window. So like right here, they give you the window. You're still going to look back, and you'll see you're going to throw it right there because that dashing dead eye. Now this is where Aaron Rodgers doesn't do as well as uh, Patrick Mahomes because Patrick Mahomes can make that throw, but unfortunately Aaron Rodgers, he can't make that throw. So again here, I'm going to roll to the right. But if he's stationary, he'll be able to fit that in. But you see there, there's that window. It's going to still open up. So while you're rolling out to the right, you'll see rolling right, nothing open. And then I'm just going to throw right there, as you can see. And that's that on the run dead eye. And the, one of the ways that you can do that, Sammy, is when you're rolling out on the pass lead on the um, in route, you're going to pass lead that up and it's going to make him, it's going to, it's going to keep you from having a quote unquote cross body throw animation. And what that's going to allow is it's just going to allow that to be a little bit more accurate and you'll get just a better catch animation. So once you, once you go to throw that, um, once you go to throw that in route, when you're rolling to the right, you're just going to kind of turn your um, joystick because it's currently going at three o'clock or four o'clock if the thing was a clock and then you're just going to kind of swivel it so that it comes back to 12 and you see it's going to get that animation that route right there that deep deep in route is probably probably the most unguardable route in the game because of how simple it just gets open and you'll see against man-to-man -man, if they try to go man-to-man -man on you that's fine so you're doing your man thing. Same thing. Because it's your best receiver, he's going to win. Right? So you could put either corner route or the in route. It's going to win against man. And then what you can actually do um, is you also still have your check down. Now, if they go man to man on you, which they probably will, and you see that press animation like that, the route to Scantling is going to be open really quick right there, as you can see. So if they're, if they're playing you a lot of man-to-man, -man, then you can do that as well. But that's the deep corner play. The second play that I want to talk to you about is the – and, and one other thing on the deep corner. This is one other quick adjustment that you can do. And this is what's called motion snapping, and this is also really, really critical. So if they're, if they're running a lot of man-to-man, -man, and they, even if they're running press coverage, it's really good to get people off the bump. And so if you wanted to run Scantling on a drag instead of a hitch, you just hit triangle, circle, and you flick the right stick down, and you see it's going to put him on a drag. What you're going to do is you're going to hit circle. Um, so if I'm Aaron Rodgers right now, I'm going to hit circle, and that's going to bring up a, a couple players, and I'm going to just keep hitting circle until it gives me Scantling. I'm going to motion him to the right by hitting the right right on the d-pad now once i hit that button he's going to move as soon as he moves you're going to snap the ball and that's what's called a motion snap so he's going to move motion snap and you see he's going to snap back in and against man to man if you throw it to the left you see you're going to have another you're going to have another option it's a really really good way to beat man to man from this play really really good way um, because even it, and let's just say they're not pressed up Still the same thing, motion amount, snap, and you see you're just going to get that inside position, and you're going to be able to get at least four or five yards. So 
Anyway, that is deep corner. The next play I wanted to talk to you about, but is going into the play um, mesh post. So same setup. You're going to max protect. You see you're going to block everybody here. But now you have a little bit of a different route progression. So what I like to do, and what a lot of people like to do with this specific play, is if they're backed off coverage like they are right there, then you would take, um, you would just run it as is. And you can just run it as is. Another thing you could do is you could take Allison and you could put him on a hitch route if you would like, um, or you could even put him on a streak route. There's all sorts of different varieties of things that you can do. But for this example, I'm just going to leave it as is. So I'm going to, and what you want to do is you want to motion snap Scantling. So motion to the right, snap it. And you'll see when he comes over the middle, didn't have so much luck there, but it's basically a high, high, low read. And you're only going to call this play a couple times a game. You're not going to call it very often, but when you do call it, it's going to work really well for you. But it's kind of your change up play. But you'll see they'll take that leverage right there, and you're able to throw that and that that pass lead to the inside. So the way you want to throw it is you want to throw it like it's kind of 9 o'clock on a clock. But you're going to motion him out. And you'll see right there, you're going to be able to get that. And again, it's that possession catch. Okay. So once you, and you don't even have to click on to him. That's what's really cool about Madden right now. You don't even have to click on to him. All you have to do um, is just hit possession catch. So like there I didn't, and I threw, obviously threw a pick, but there I didn't do any clicking on of him. And you'll see here. And that's because they're throwing me a, a cover four, which this play is not exactly great against cover four. Because you can see it's kind of right in that window. But if they're running a lot of cover two, which if you're running deep corner, the thing they're going to do is they're going to start running cover two. What that's going to allow is you're going to be able to do that motion snap right there. And you're going to be able to fit it into that window right there. Okay? So that's the that's that play. And then let's go over this play right here um stick so stick is kind of a change up play it's just a play that you'll use if they're running a lot of man to man but basically all you're going to do is you're going to again max protect you're going to take your receiver on the left side and you could put him in any route that you want because you're running a lot of in routes because you're running the play deep corner what i would recommend you do is put him on a comeback route and you're going to see what's going to happen is um, and then Allison, you want to stick him, keep him on that route. Anyway, when you motion out, you're still going to do that same motion snap. But when you motion out Valdez Scantling, you're going to see he's on a corner route and he's going to typically beat man to man. Obviously, he didn't there, but if, it's because he wasn't pressed up. But if they run a lot of man to man, this is going to be another really, really, really good option for you. And I would even take Allison and put him on a zig route because zigs are really good against man. But you see, just pass leading to the right, and you'll typically get that user catch that that um, that angle, just like that. But stick is kind of one of those plays you really only call it if they're if if you know for sure they're like in. Um, man to man, and it's just kind of a change up play more than anything for you, but you'll see it'll be really good. Okay, and then the other play I wanted to talk to you about is the play verticals. So, verticals this is the play that you really want to run if they're running a lot of it's kind of the play that you want to run if you're not getting blitzed a lot. So, if they're if they're sitting back in a lot of coverage, this is what you want to run, and very all you have to do to do it is motion Valdez Scantling out again, just like we've been doing. The only adjustment that you want to make on this is you want to take Jimmy Graham and you want to put him on a streak, just a straight streak right up the middle. Because what's going to happen is against the, the deeper zones, he's going to pull them. But you'll see you'll motion him out. And you see, you can you can't really throw that route to um, to circle like that. I you used to be able to, but you can't anymore against zone. But against man, you can do it. Um, so let me show you man real quick. Um, but if they're in any type of cover zero man, which 
most people won't be, but some people will if they're blitzing you a lot. Then you'll want to watch for this. But if the safety on the right side is not over the top, you're going to see when he cuts to the inside, he beats man every single time with that motion snap. And so that's going to be an automatic touchdown for you. The uh, other thing that they'll do, though, like if they just go with a standard cover two man, which they probably will do, if you motion him out, you'll see when he cuts to the up into the out, you're still able to put that in there. That's still an option for you against the cover two man. And again, you just want to possession catch it if there's a safety over the top. And if there's not a safety over the top, then you want to um, do what's called a rack catch, which basically you're going to hit um, like right there. I tried to do it, but it wasn't the right example. Um, but it's where you, you, you're going to hold square instead of X. All right. So that's verticals. And then I wanted to show you really quickly how that looks against like a zone. And the route that you want to focus on is the route to Allison or the route to Jones. Either one of those are going to be wide open uh, against zone. So the vertical routes are going to run everybody off, and you're going to roll out. And normally, it's going to be a check down to Aaron Jones. But what's going to happen is over time, they're going to kind of get annoyed with that. And then what they're going to do is they're going to take their middle linebacker, and they're going to say, you know, he's going to ma- he's only going to guard – Aaron Jones, and then that's why you wanted to put Jimmy Graham on a streak because you're either going to have Jimmy Graham wide open if there's no deep vertical in the middle, like right here, there's no deep vertical in the middle. So you can click on and possession catch that. Again, you want to possession catch like 80% of the things that you're going to throw. Or what they're going to do is they're going to run something like this, which is the three double buzz, and you're going to see. Um, this is going to be wide open over here. And I didn't give you a good example because he um, followed him. Most defenses, they won't follow him. And if they do follow him, your running back is going to be wide open. But you'll see here. So this way they won't follow. But you'll see here. And if they do follow him, then your running back is going to be wide open. So you're just watching, and if they follow him, great. If not, you see you're going to be able to fit that in, that vertical route in on the left side. It's actually best against like a cover two, but the route that you're going to hit more times than not is going to be your running back because they're not going to they're going to follow him because most people you're going to play are the the game is kind of work that into the mechanics of it but just see here and i'm just not getting a good not getting a good throw or um not getting a good throw whoops wrong play sorry but you'll see here against tampa too let me see if i can show you Yeah, it's just not uh, not hitting it, and it's 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 primarily actually because of the um, of the spot. So you don't want to run verticals if you're in front of the 40 yard line. So behind anywhere behind the 50 yard line, you can run it. But what happens is, as you can see, that safety is going to come off. That left side safety is going to come off, and that's just not um, not good. But if you do like that. And then you're going to be able to fit that in, and I'm not not giving you very good examples, but you're wanting to you're wanting to throw that down and away. So at like seven or eight o'clock, if your joystick was a clock, and you might just put uh, Devonte Adams on a straight streak, so he doesn't so he gets downfield more. The trick is getting him debt getting him downfield more. That's the key to this whole play is to get Devonte Adams to run off anything. But I can't get um, I can't get a great example for you because the other thing is you'll need a little bit of time in the pocket. That's why again I only run this play if they're if I know for a fact they're in cover zero because I want to hit Valdez Scantling, or if I know that they're not really bringing anyone and I'm going to have time in the pocket. But here you'll see right there, and he'll he'll typically be be open on that one.
but I don't run that play too much. The uh, the last play is the wide receiver post, and so wide receiver post is very uh, simple. Uh, what you want to do with Allison is that you want to put him on a smart routed out route or just put him on a hitch route. You can put him on all sorts of different things, um, but but um, if you put him on that out route, that's that'll be fine. Um, or you put it on a hitch, either way. But the route you're going to want to focus in on is circle. And you'll see here, he's going to kind of drag across. And, and I'm giving you really bad examples. Against the cover three, he'll be wide open. We'll show you against cover four, actually. But against zone, you'll see he'll just kind of drag across and get over the top of the yellow, the hook zones, the underneath zones, and underneath the deep zones. And that's why you want to keep that deep post route that Devontae Adams is on. Now, what's really cool is if they run, let's say they run like three, let's say they run like a standard cover three. What's going to happen is you'll see here, and this is only if you have a lot of time in the pocket, but if you have Allison on that out route, then um, what you'll see is the deep blue zones, if you have time, they're going to get confused, and you can throw that all the way to the right and you can click on, and you want to aggressive catch it. You don't want a possession catch that. If you try to possession catch, you'll probably get intercepted. But that's that's kind of just a once in a while thing. Again, I don't run the main two plays that I run over and over again out of this playbook is the corner, the deep corner route, and then the mesh post off of it. And then I run some of the wide receiver post. The problem this year. Um, is the route to Devontae Adams, as you can see right there, just doesn't get as open as it used to. And that's why sometimes I'll just use deep attack. But because that deep, deep in route is so effective, you can really make a living off of that too. So anyway, last thing is for the offensive side of things is to show you two ways to score in the red zone. So if you're inside, inside like the two-yard line, the first way is you can come out in your bunch, so you think they're going to think that you're going to pass, and then you can audible down to your single back, and you'll see you can run the stretch or the slam, and those are two different running plays that you have here. So the first first one is the stretch, and you'll see the stretch is really, really good. It's really effective, and what you want to do when you run a stretch in Madden is you want to basically look at the tight end. And if the tight end is able to make his block, you want to run it outside. If he's not able to make his block, you want to run it inside. So here he's getting outside, and you see that hole opens back up. But you're either going to go, when you, once you get the ball, you're either going to go directly up the field, or you're going to go to the outside. It's just depending on how the defense plays it. It's not really easy to predict. Most of the time, at least in my, if they're, if you see right there, that would have been better for me to go outside. But most of the time, you're going to go to the outside, but if they're in a really blitz-heavy type of defense and they're crowding the line of scrimmage, you're probably going to run it to the inside. It just kind of depends on how the defense plays it, though. But what's really cool about the run is you can do both. There you see it. And then the other thing is you can play maker it to run it to the left side. So as you can see here, if I go down to the stretch, if I flick on any running play, this is how you do it. But if I flick left on the right analog stick, you see it's going to play maker him to the right. If I flick right, it's going to play maker him to the left. So you see there's no tell to it, and then I can run right or left, depending on what I think is the best way to go. And then the last thing that I wanted to show you from this form, I guess I have two more things. I wanted to show you the slam. So that's the inside run. So you're either going to run it left or you're going to run it right, depending on where you're playmakering it. So if you run it right, you're going to get that nice little animation there. And I'm telling you, that slam is probably more effective than the dive, especially if you're going really fast and you're no huddling and you're at the line of scrimmage and you've got them on their toes 
and they think you're gonna you're gonna pass or they think you're gonna run in, um, something to the outside. You see that slam is just so good, and for them to stop the slam, they have to come out in a, a dedicated run defense. So my advice would be to run the slam more than I would run the stretch. And then the last play that I wanted to show you from this is the tight end post. And what you're going to do in the red zone is you're going to do what's called a smart route. So you're going to hit triangle. You're going to hit the receiver you want a smart route, which in this case is going to be Jimmy Graham and Geronimo Allison. But you're going to click that, and then you're going to click R1. And you see it's going to make him into almost like a slant route. And the same thing for Allison. You're going to make that route right there. I like to block my running back. And then I'm going to take Scantling and I'm going to put him on a curl route and I'm going to motion snap him to the inside. So he kind of sits in the back of the end zone. And this is just another, this is just a nice passing play, but you'll see a lot of times you'll be able to throw that route to Jimmy Graham. And if you can't throw it to Jimmy Graham, then what's going to happen is you're going to have two other options that you can throw it to. Let me show you. Uh, so if they run a deep blue which they which they probably will if they're in like a cover three, then you're gonna see you can throw it out to the left. So as you see there, Jimmy Graham was covered, so I look to the left and I can throw that in the back pylon of the end zone in the back corner. And that's why you want to smart route him so you have that option. So now you can run a you can basically run a post route, a, a, a corner route, and then lastly, if none of those open up. I've seen this time and time again. What's going to happen is this route right here to Scantling is going to sit in the back of the end zone. And if you just wait for the drag to kind of come across, the players are going to kind of freeze up and they're going to focus on the drag and they're not going to focus on the uh, curl route in the back of the end zone. And what I like to do is I just like to pass lead up at 12 o'clock. And, and that works for me. But I don't normally have to... Th even do that this is just if you want to have something to throw okay but i would recommend running the slam i think the slam is going to be very effective uh, for you okay so that is offense that's that's how to have a really good passing offense and then i want to show you two other things i want to show you defense i want to show you two plays on defense and i want to show you one little thing on offense uh, one one more thing on offense so on defense, and I'm going to go ahead and flip. Um, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and show you the defense actually first. So the defense I want to show you is a really good run defense, but it's kind of a tricky little way you have to do it. So if you want to run the ball, you want to have the stretch, you want to have the ISO, and then you want to have the blast, and then you want to have the either the power O or the toss. So you see I'm changing my audibles. So I'm going to go down to my running formation. And this is a really, really good running formation. I form tight. It's probably one of the best ones. And I'm going to show you the best one um, in a second. But if you want to stop the run, what you'll do is you'll come out in your play and you can do two different options. But the easiest one is to come out in the 3-4 bear. And what you're going to do is you're going to, you're going to come out in the play pinch buck zero but you're not going to run it you're just going to come out in that play and what i like to do pinch dog three is the play you actually want to run and so i'm going to put that in my audibles and i'm going to audible to it the only other thing i wanted to show you though um and that's why you have to have your defensive settings where you have that auto flip off but you're going to come out in the play pinch buck zero you see what's going to happen that left guy is going to go right into that little slot and then once he does that you're going to click square to audible and you're going to audible to pinch dog three. The only thing else that you're going to do is you're going to take this guy right here and put him on a quarterback spy. You do that by hitting um, triangle, triangle, triangle to click his guy. And then you flick the right stick to the right or to the left. And that puts him on a quarterback spy. And what's going to happen is um, if you want to, what I would do is use your Vaccaro. But if you if you don't feel comfortable with doing that, you can use one of the linemen. But as soon as the ball is snapped, you want to click the right stick in, and it's going to tell that spy that it's he's basically supposed to go find the guy running the ball. So I'll show you here, halfback stretch. And same thing. You'll see that bare front kind of stumps the kind of stops the stretch. Okay. So again, you come out in pinch bucko. He does that little move right there. 
you audible to pinch dog three, you hit triangle, and then you go to quick adjust, which is triangle again. And then we're trying to adjust um, the free safety, which in this case is triangle. And you're going to flick the right stick to left. And then this is what your play is going to look like. And then you'll see if he tries to run the ISO, like run down the middle, you'll see that safety is going to come down and he's not going to get very many yards. So that's how you stop the that's how you stop the run. And now what I want to do is I'm going to flip sides and I want to show you um, how you can actually run the ball really well, even against a really good run defense. So if you are um, if you're a runner, you want to use the the I form primarily, and you want to use the I form. Uh, H tight. That's the best one that I found. The sh the I form H tight in combination with the strong H tight. But I would recommend, you know, the weak close flex. But basically in Oakland, you can run a variety of different runs. It doesn't have to be the the one that I'm going to show you is I form tight. But a lot of people, the guy that just won the Madden tournament ran HB dive. I think he ran it like 38 times out of like 50 play calls. And he actually flipped it because the trick is if your quarterback, you want to run the ball to the side of hand that your quarterback's on. So for example, um, Ryan Tannehill in this video, he's right handed. So I'm going to get a better handoff animation if I run the ball to the right because he's right handed. Just the way the game works. I don't know exactly why, but you get a little bit better of an animation. Your audibles you want to do is you want to put HB stretch in. You want to put HB ISO. You want to put HB blast. And then you want to put um, power O is what I like. And then what I would tell you is if you know you're going to want to run the ball, then you want to put offensive linemen in at tackle. Okay, so, or at tight end. So you see here I can hit R1, go to my subs. I just sub Dennis Kelly in here at the left tight end. I'm going to sub Taylor Lewin in at the right tight end. And then on the outside, what I would recommend you do is put a tight end there. So for the for the Titans, uh, Jonu Smith or Delaney Walker, both will work. And then uh, I like to put it Jonu Smith for the Titans specifically. Okay. So then you hit circle to get out of that. And then you're going to come out in. Um, what I would do is you can come out in whatever you want. But what I would do because stretch is already in your audibles, I would come out in the play PAFB slide. And then defense, I'm just going to show you some random things. So when you come out, you have four different plays that you can go to. You can go to the, the ISO, which is a run right down the middle. You can go to the HP Blast, which is a run through um, the three and the four gap. Okay, so it's off the guard. You can go to the stretch, which is kind of a wide zone off the tackle outside run. And then you can go to the power, which is right off of right off of the guard. It's kind of a, a you know a short yardage power run type play. But you can attack all of the angles of the defense by running with these four specific runs. Because remember, you can playmaker it right or left. So even though even though the play is scripted to go to the right, I can just playmaker it, and he's going to run it to the left. Again, though, remember the rule of thumb is you want to typically run the ball to the right. Um, as a general as a general rule because you get a better handoff animation but anyway so with the stretch and here's the only thing i have to say about running the ball you don't want to hit turbo until you're through the line of scrimmage and you want to hold left trigger when you hand get when you um when the play starts so I'm going to hold left trigger. It's going to give me the ball and then I'm going to look for the hole and I'm either going to go up the middle or on the stretch anyways, I'm going to go up the middle or I'm going to go outside to the right. So uh, here I am. I'm going to run the ball to the right. And here you'll see I'm going to go all the way outside again. And then now once I got to that open space, I'm going. And as soon as I see someone, because Derrick Henry has that arm bar ability, I'm going to hit X um, when I'm going. So I'm just going to come through. And then you see there, there you see that it activated. I broke a tackle. OK, um, but you want to get north and south. You want to start going vertical as soon as you can. But sometimes it's best to like right here. You see that's me going right north and south. And then there you see there's the arm bar. I got that animation where he kind of just, you know, shoves him off of him. But that's the stretch. So you're either going to go. Oh, whoops, that's my. Um, 
pay no attention to that. Um, that that was um, that was a mess. I, met, I ran the uh, pass play instead of running the the run bo- the run play. But anyway, so stretch, and then if I run, you'll see here I can choose if I want to go inside. Or I can choose if I want to go outside there. The hole opened up inside. And that's a lot of just repetition. You want to practice it. But if you choose to go inside, you typically don't want you don't want to cut it back. You just want to cut it up. So you'll see here I'm coming right and then I'm just going to cut it right up the middle um, if things don't open up outside. Now, if you can get outside, you definitely want to go. But basically, you're looking to get outside, looking to get outside, looking to get outside. And then you see that hole open up. So you're going to come uh, north and south, you're going to start running vertical. That's how you run the stretch. Um, but it's really critical to not hold turbo because if you hold turbo, what happens is two things. First, you get through the hole before it opens up. Secondly, what happens is the game is actually programmed. It's actually programmed into the game that if you hit right trigger, then people are going to start to block shed. It's just literally programmed. So the only time, like right there, I hit right trigger because I had to, to to escape somebody. But you don't want to just hit it just to hit it. Okay? And it's really, really important. Uh, it's probably the biggest adjustment I've had to make to running the ball. And here, as you'll see, it left. But And then once I get in the open field, then I can hit it. And you'll see there's the arm bar, and you're seeing how good that is. Um, just basically when the player comes to try to tackle you, you just rapidly hit X. I would hit it two or three times really quickly. And what's going to happen is it's going to give you that it's going to give you that animation. OK, so that's how you do it. One other thing that you can do um, is is um, when you get in the open field, you'll see I can I can hit what R1 does is it changes the ball hand. And so when you're running with a player like Derrick Henry and he has arm bar, you want the ball to always be in the outside hand. So you'll see here, like right there, it's in the outside hand, so I don't have to hit it, right? But if I run to the left side, let me show you what happens. So if I run to the left and I get through the initial, and I wasn't able to get through the initial on that one, but when I get through the initial, you know, kind of spot, like right here, see how he switches his ball hand to the outside hand? If he doesn't do that, all you have to do is hit R1. So sometimes they do it, sometimes they don't. Just pay attention to that. But again, it's not that big of a deal. But what's going to happen is if he's got that ball on the inside hand, he's going to have a harder time of getting the breakaway stiff arm animations. But anyway, that's that's how you run. The blast, really quickly, this play is designed to run right right up the inside spot of the defense. So if the defense is kind of spreading out a lot, you're, you'll see like like this would be a good time to run the blast. Then I'm gonna it's it's I'm gonna playmaker to the right because I want to have that right hand off. So I'm gonna playmaker the run to the right, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna basically kind of angle the stick so he's looking like he's going outside, and then I'm just gonna cut it straight up the middle as you can see. That's really, really, really effective. The blast is kind of a complement to the stretch. And so if they start shutting down your stretch, the blast is actually designed to be able to cut in or out. It's You're going to basically hand the ball to him, and then you're going to make a snap decision. Now, I would never cut it all the way outside to the right. Like you see right there, that's what happens. The For whatever reason... The way the game is is made, you you don't get as good of blocking if you try. Like if I I've never been able to just bounce the blast outside with the exception of breaking a couple tackles, as you can see right there. So what I would recommend you do is kind of start outside and then come back, and you'll see most of the time that cutback is wide open. And I've actually found the stretch, the blast, the ice. So if you use all three of those, you're gonna it's gonna be really really difficult to stop you um, from a running perspective. But again, the real critical thing is that you hold left trigger once you get the ball and then get really good at basically steering your guy, but do not try to bounce it outside unless you're running the stretch. So if you're running the ISO or you're running the uh, blast, you're going to either run it straight into the hole or you're going to run it or you're going to cut it all the way back, but you're not going to cut it outside on the play side. It's absolutely critical. And then the last play that I wanted to go over is the ISO, or I have two more, the ISO. So the ISO, um, what's really cool about it is you can run it inside or outside. Now, in my opinion, it's the best inside run in the game, but basically ISO, and you're just going to walk forward, and you'll see you can run this, like, I'm telling you, man, you can run this so much. 
But what you can do is if they start to, to stop that, then you can, you see there, I can, I can cut it, make one quick cut and be to the outside on the left side. You only want to do that when they start to jam, um, when they start to jam you, jam you on the inside. And the way that you can tell that, and this is my simple thing that I look at, but basically I watch the cornerback on the left side. So the, the defensive back that's standing close to the 40 yard line, if he, if he comes up, if I feel like I can take him one on one, then I'll cut it all the way to the outside. If he does, if he stays put, then I won't. So here you see he backs off. So I know that I can get, if he backs off, I know that I have, at least five, six yards, and I'll take it all the way over there. If he doesn't back off, then I won't. So here you see see how he's got reinforcements that time? And now I got a really good animation and was able to break a tackle. But that won't happen every time for you. And then the last run is, but that's how I do the ISO. And again, most of the time, and you see, you can actually, you can, you can actually cut that out both sides. So, if you feel, and that's just a pre-snap thing. If you want to look and say, okay, the defense is really weak to the left side, I'm going to look that way. If I get that block, then, then I've got it. Here, you see, I did, I wasn't able to get the block, and I end up getting stopped. But I would truly exhaust running the ball right down the middle, um, because it's really difficult to stop. There's not very many defenses that can stop a really good middle run because you have that fullback. And that's, what's really, that's, what's really helpful about this. The last play that I want to show you is power. O, and then the, um, the um, play action pass play. What I would do with this is just simply, this is just like, if, if you just have to throw the ball and what I would do with it is I would actually flip the play. So you can do that by hitting square right trigger. I would max protect. So you're only going to have one person on a route, Delaney Walker or Smith. So you're literally, and then all I would do with Walker is if you feel like that's a good route, great. If not, I would just put him on a slant and he's going to come all the way across the formation, but it's just a very simple read because what's going to happen is they're going to start blitzing a lot of people and you're going to be able to hit that slant route in behind it. But again, I would not, I would throw once or twice. I mean, there's people that won tournaments this year that literally did not throw the ball the entire game. So, I mean, it's just, you don't want to do that. What you want to do is get really, really good at running the ball. Um, it's, I'm telling you, it's just the way to go this year. If you're, if you're a runner, you don't have to throw it at all. And then the last play is the power O this play is for, um, basically I don't run this play very much, but if they are blitzing through your zone runs and then they're giving you a hard time on your zone runs, the power O is a simple, it's a very simple run, but it's, it's, it's kind of challenging the way to run it. But basically you want to kind of run the power O like a dive. It's not designed to go outside. A lot of people will try to take it outside. What it's designed to do is it's designed to go literally right. You're, you're, you're going to go straight up the field. You want to be shooting to run this play right in behind your guard and your tackle. And you see right there, that's exactly what you want. And again, it's not that, it's not that big yardage play, but it's a very effective short yardage play because you got that pulling guard right in that in that gap, and you're basically going to read the pulling guard. If the pulling guard blocks the guy and he pushes him to the outside, here you see pushing the inside, and then I'm able to get out um, and get in the open field. And there you see there's that arm bar again. Whenever someone comes to try to tackle you, it's just a quickly hit X a couple times, and you're going to be just fine. But here you'll see, oh, and I need to run up the middle. But normally, if you just kind of follow that guard, staying behind that guard, don't go too fast. That's why you don't want to hit turbo. Then you're good. There you see there's that blitz. And that's where, again, he the, the guard blocked him outside. you got to watch where is the guard blocking him, and then you're going to go the opposite direction. So it's kind of a tricky run, but if you practice it, you'll get really good at it. But the runs that I would do, in priority, I would first do the ISO. You'll see right here, the ISO is really, really effective. And I would learn how to do that cut to the left. And then if the ISO, um, if you get good at the ISO, then I would graduate up to the stretch. And then once you master the stretch, I would master the blast. And then I would master the power O. But the power O is kind of one that I really don't use very much. But when I do use it, it's it's pretty effective for me. So that's how you run the ball, and that's how you use the Oakland playbook. I showed you how to pass. I showed you a, a run defense. Now what I want to do is show you a blitz. So 
this is really um, kind of something that you can do. So if someone is passing the ball on you a lot, which um, if they if they like to pass the ball, what I want to do is I want to show you a blitz, very simple setup. So it's the big dime one four six. You can find this in the Green Bay Packers uh, playbook. You see, you still have the three four bear that I talked about, and then I there's some other things that you can do out of this nickel formation, and then. Um, You'll see big dime one four six. So that's the formation I want to focus on. The play you're going to do is you're going to come out and DB sting to buzz, but you're not actually going to run that play. Okay, that's absolutely critical. You're not actually going to run that play. Your audibles is cover two sync. That's the play you're going to run. So when you come out in it, you're going to come out and DB sting two, and then you're going to audible to cover two sync. Okay, so you come out and you audible to cover two sync. Here's what your play looks like. Now, once you do that, I want you to hit triangle and flick the right stick up. And what that's going to do is it's going to tell all your zones that they should play over the top coverage. It's going to turn those outside corners into cloud flats, and they're going to be really, really effective. The only other thing you have to do is you're going to slide Williams in off the edge right here, just like that. So you're going to click circle until you get him. And you can actually, if you hold circle and left on the D-pad, it can help you kind of directionally switch to him. But you're going to move him right there. And then you're just going to click off of him. And if you want to use her, this guy, I would recommend you use her, this guy. That's who I use her. But if you don't want to and you just want to blitz, then I would just be Lowry. And you're going to, the last step is you're going to hold L1, R1. And it's going to cause you to quarterback contain. And what that's going to do is it's going to help the blitz angle for that corner. And you'll see when you snap the ball, you're going to have pressure on that left edge. And the reason it didn't is because I moved the, the linebacker and let it sit for too long. But basically, you're going to audible to cover two sync. So it's square L1. You're going to slide this guy in. And then you're just going to click off of him. So he resets. And then you're going to hold L1 R run. And then you're going to hold L1 and up on the right stick to pass commit. So that's what you're going to see. And then there you see there's that pressure off that left edge. That's the, my opinion, Sammy, that's the best blitz in the game. So the setups are all going to be in the description for you. So I'll go through that and you can check that out. But again, you're just going to simply slide this guy in so that he, and you can literally just slide him in right there and then just click on off of him. And you'll see he'll naturally reset. And the trick is to quarterback contain rush. So you do that by L1, R1. And if you do that, that's going to contain them and then hold L1 and flick up on the right stick. And that's going to make them pass commit. And you'll see, you're going to get some pretty good there. I got him. I didn't place him very well, but if you place him well, you're going to be very effective. That's a nice little pass defense that you can do for when you play me um, or someone that likes to pass. If you can master this play, it's going to help you stop the pass. But the trick is with all this, these are a couple of plays that I wanted to give to you, break them down really deep for you so you can understand it. And But the trick is you have to practice these before you go in an online match. And if you practice these before you go into a match, you get really good at setting them up. Now you have a pass defense and a run defense. So if they think they're going to pass, you run the pass defense. You think they're going to run, you run your run defense. And then on offense, you have to decide if you want to be a passer or a runner. I would recommend being a runner. I'd recommend using the Titans because of how effective it is this year. But you pick a good running team, and then you work on work on mastering the runs. Or if you want to throw it, no problem. I gave you a bunch of plays uh, for that as well. But anyway, happy birthday, man. Thank you so much for checking this 